Hi everyone. In this tutorial I'm going to uh, give you an example of how to make an interlocked Mobius torus. Um, sounds like a mouthful. Um, however, you may have seen this kind of uh, this kind of shape around in the uh, 3D printing community, for example. It's uh, a popular mathematical uh, shape uh, because of its uh, apparent complexity and uh, visual aesthetic. Um, if you've never heard of it before, um, it's, it's basically, as I said, a mathematical uh, tor uh, torus that's been twisted into a Mobius strip. Um, and then with uh, ladder uh, connections interlinking uh, itself. So, it, you know, it's hard to explain. Uh, we're better just to jump into it and show you how it's done. All right, and um, we'll just go to Extended Primitives, and we'll select Torus Knot, and we'll change that to a base curve, a circle base curve, and we'll just draw it out here in the viewport. And as always, um, you know, I'm just drawing this arbitrarily here uh, for the sake of uh, the tutorial. However, uh, uh, later on, if you decide to uh, model this for any specific purpose, always pay attention to your uh, to your dimensions, um, especially if you're trying to model the scale for jewelry or or any kind of uh, specific application. All right, but uh, in this case, we're just going to uh, just do it arbitrarily here. All right, so then we'll change our segments to 22. All right, so 22, and then we'll change our sides to 4. Okay, and this is the result of that. Now, we're going to add a twist to it, but if we just add a twist of 1.0, uh, because of the par parametric nature of this uh, primitive, it's actually adding two twists, all right, one here and then again here, all right, uh, so it's, it's just the way that this object gets created in, in 3ds Max that, uh, you know, one twist is actually twisting uh, around the uh, entire object twice. So in order to uh, just achieve one one whole twist around, we're going to uh, actually change that value to 0 0.5. And you can see what happens here. There's, a, there's an error that occurs uh, in the polygons right here. Okay, but that's easy to easy to remedy. We're just going to apply a edit poly modifier, drop down to the uh, polygon level, select all those polygons and delete. All right, and then we'll uh, switch over to our, uh, our border selection. We'll select the two open edges there and bridge. Okay, so now that, uh, that has been remedied. Okay, and we'll apply a smoothing value real quick of uh, the Smooth 30 in the Graphite Ribbon. All right, to uh, just quickly apply some smoothing groups here. Okay, so this is our Mobius strip. This is, uh, uh, you know, one con continuous object uh, all the way around, and it has a twist in it. All right, so that's a very fast way to achieve a Mobius strip. If you've seen my previous tutorial on, on how to... Uh, how to model a Mobius strip from a, uh, a box? Um, you know, there, there's uh, you know quite a few processes uh, to achieving the end result um, in that method. However, that method is also uh, you know, can be translated to other 3D modeling applications. Where this one is uh, very uh, specific to 3ds Max because we're we're starting with uh, a parametric uh, primitive. But uh, this is a quick and easy way to uh, achieve a Mobius strip. But we're going to uh, create a, a more complex object here. So um, the next step is to uh, go ahead down to face level and just run a, uh, a, uh, f a face loop around the, the one set of, of faces there until you have something like this. And um, go ahead and detach that. All right, so now we have two completely separate surfaces here. All right, um, and uh, the next step will just be to select one of those uh, surfaces and uh, apply a push modifier, and we'll uh, give it a value of 10, and then we can c copy that uh, modifier over to the other object, all right, and just paste it. 
All right, so now we have a push modifier on both uh, surfaces. Okay, and they're they're running, uh, uh, you know, interwoven through each other here. Okay. All right. Uh, what we're going to achieve here is uh, we're going to add some bridging in here that will interlock or interweave each other. So um, in order to uh, in order to do that, we have to convert this back to a solid form. So we'll add a shell modifier, and uh, we'll give it a value of 20 outer amount. All right, and then we'll just copy that over to the uh, the other object and paste. All right, so this is the result of that. Okay, now we have two separate uh, objects here. All right, and um, to make this a little bit easier, what we're going to do is hide this object. All right, so we'll just hide selection and work on this object alone for now. All right, we'll just go in the top viewport and we'll begin uh, bridging some faces. All right, and um, in order to do that, we'll apply an edit poly modifier down into the face level and decide where you would like to begin on the object. Uh, you know, I like to go into top view and pick, uh, you know, uh, a face that's that's you know right in front of me here and then just uh, rotate the object and choose a face underneath that is directly parallel to that face so these faces need to be you know directly parallel of each other okay so then we could shift click bridge all right and we've bridged those together here um, I'm going to give it three segments and a taper value of negative 2.0 all right and accept that okay and once you've done that it's just a matter of going around the object and selecting every other face top and bottom okay so every other face and then just bridge okay so every other face and grab them here as well every other face and bridge and we'll just keep going around the object in the same manner okay so every other thing we can grab a couple at a time I don't like to go all the way around and do it uh, just in case there's some errors or, or problems um, I like to do it a little bit at a time here and see how that looks and then just keep going it, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to get around the object anyway um, so and then the, finally the last three here and then every other face here and then bridge okay and that's our completed object the first one all right so you can see we've gone all the way around now we can unhide uh, unhide all to bring the other object into the scene and what we'll want to do here is select the other object and find an area let's add an edit poly to it go down to face mode and now find an area on this object uh, that that you can begin in between the bridges of the other object so let's look right between two of the bridges on the uh, first object and I see a polygon there and then we'll just want to uh, find the corresponding polygon on the other side okay so that would be these two here all right and let's just shift click bridge and because this is a completely different object uh, our, our bridge uh, parameters have not been saved so we just have to uh, re-enter them manually okay so that's that's it right there okay and just accept it and once we have a, one of our bridges in place and we see that it's not intersecting the other object we can select the other object and hide it all right just to make the process a little bit more easy you know easy to go on this object and again same thing just select every other every other face along both sides okay and uh, bridge now the, the parameters will be saved here so you can just keep going along all right so we'll do three at a time all right and then bridge and then two three and let's go up here one two three bridge and then finally this last one here 
okay, and then bridge. All right, so that process is done. And now we can unhide all and look around and make sure that uh, we're not intersecting anywhere. That looks good. All right, so now we have our interlinked uh, Mobius, but uh, what we're going to do is take it a little, little further here and refine it. And um, I'm going to add a subdivision modifier here, but uh, before I do, let's connect the two objects because they're still currently two separate objects. So let's go ahead and attach that other object. All right, so now they're one object with two uh, individual elements. So we can go down to element level and select the, uh, the one element and um, we can assign it a, a different, uh, we'll assign it a, a material ID of two. All right, and by default, uh, one is the default, so we know that the other one has an ID of one. So we'll go into our material editor and we'll bring up multi sub object material and we'll set the number to two and just copy this one down into the second uh, slot and we'll change the uh, diffuse color here to like a red and we'll go ahead and apply it and you can see now we have one gray and one red object uh, sub element I mean on the same object alright and um, now that we've done that I'm gonna harden some of these edges just the uh, you know just the obvious visible edges here edge loops I should say alright I'm gonna do that just by applying a slight chamfer to them just like that and now there when I go and subdivide it and I'll play two iterations we have a nice a nice result here okay so that is an inter an interlinked uh, Mobius strip done in 3ds max very quickly all right and uh, again now you know this is a, a beautiful shape that uh, you know you can use as a as a, as a render uh, uh, as a way to test your renders um, but in a more practical sense I mean this is um, something you can convert into uh, just like in my other tutorials uh, my other Mobius tutorial and my uh, um, you know my Starball tutorial you could um, convert this into uh, you know perhaps uh, um, an earring or, or, or a pendant of some sort uh, for a character or it could be uh, you know, uh, just uh, some modern art sculpture in a uh, architectural uh, scene. You know, the possibilities are, are limitless as always. But um, it's just an aesthetically uh, interesting object. And uh, again, I've seen it uh, done many times in other applications, but, uh, you know, rarely do you see uh, something like this being created in 3ds Max. So I thought I'd take a shot at it and. Um, and that's what we came up with. So, hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Um, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, continue on with this on your own. I mean, there's plenty you can do here to make this an even more interesting object. You could, uh, you know, extrude by polygon on some of these, uh, these, um, uh, you know, loop edges or uh, polygon uh, face edges and. Uh, you know, just go wild with it and see what kind of crazy shapes you can come up with. All right, so um, thanks for watching, and I will, you know, I'll be back again very soon with another tutorial. So please uh, subscribe to my channel, and um, I hope you enjoyed this. All right, thank you very much. See you soon.